Hello and welcome to the latest update of the Sugarcane Rainfall Outlook for the Burdekin District. Today we will look into how the access model verified for rainfall over the month of May before touching on June rainfall today. We'll then cover short term weather watch points before seeing what the rainfall outlooks have in store over the coming months, then finish with a quick tour of the Climate Services for Agriculture website. First, the access model performance over the month of May. In the top left image we have the observed rainfall, below that the rainfall converted to percentage of mean rainfall to better match the outlook forecast colour scale, and on the right the access rainfall outlook and skill for May. We can see that the forecast of low odds of 25-35% to 35 of exceeding the May median rainfall has verified well, with next to no rainfall in most of the gauges. So far in June, it's remained largely dry across the growing regions, apart from some localised showers delivering 24mm at Millaroo and some weak showers on the coastal fringe with 1.4mm recorded in the Alva Beach gauge. Most locations have not recorded any rainfall in June so far, with many gauges recording 20% or less than the long-term monthly average for June, as shown by the many dark red dots in the percentage of mean rainfall map below. In the short term, the linear way of rainfall is expected across the Burdekin with a weak high in the Coral Sea extending a ridge along the coast, leading to settled conditions over the next seven days. Here we're looking at the chance of exceeding 5mm of rainfall over the fortnight from the 25th of June, broken down into week-long periods. You can access these maps on the link above and choose from a spread of rainfall thresholds between, between 1mm and 700mm. For week one, between the 25th of June to the 1st of July, there's a less than 10% chance of receiving 5mm of more, and slightly higher odds into week 2 of around 10-25% to for parts of the Burdekin between the 2nd and 8th of July. So what can we expect for the month of July? In the rainfall outlook, there are low percentage odds of exceeding the median rainfall at around 25-35%. to The model skill is around 50-55% to to the northwest of air and 55-65% to southeast of air. This translates into a lower chance of seeing rainfall close to the historical median for the month, as we can see from the lower rainfall values in the 50% chance of at least chart on the left, compared with the historical median values on the right, with 50% chance of receiving around 1 to 5 millimetres through air, compared to the slightly higher median July rainfall of 5 to 10 millimetres. Breaking the rainfall down further for July with the high chance on the left, the 75% chance of receiving, and the lower chance totals on the right, the 25% chance of receiving, to give us an idea for the potential rainfall spread for the month. And it's modest amounts, as we would expect in the middle of the dry season, with rainfall likely to fall within the 0 to 25 millimetre range. Moving on to the month of August, and a neutral to slightly lower odds of 40 to 50% chance of exceeding the median rainfall for this month. The model skill across the Burdekin during July is quite high at this time of year, typically correct 65-75% to 75 of the time. This translates into slightly lower odds of rainfall close to the historical median for the month, as we can see from the lower values in the 50% chance of at least chart on the left, compared with the slightly higher values in the historical median map on the right. Breaking the rainfall down further for August with the high chance on the left, the 75% chance of receiving, and the lower chance totals on the right, the 25% chance of receiving, to give us an idea for the potential raid before spread for the month. And the range is low, as you would expect, in the dry season still, through the Burdekin with around 0 to 25 millimetres possible through August as well. And a quick snapshot of the long-term rainfall outlook from August to October, and we see a lower chance of 30 to 45% of exceeding the median rainfall across the outlook period. The modelling is typically correct 55 to 65% of the time through this forecast period. Both Australian and international climate models are indicating strong odds of both a positive IOD event and an El Nino to be underway during late winter and into spring. Here I'm showing the map of the mean rainfall deciles for the last seven times we've seen both a positive IOD and an El Nino co-occurring since 1960 when reliable records for the IOD commenced. And when these two combine, it typically leads to drier than normal conditions for much of eastern Australia, with rainfall through the Burdekin typically in the lowest 20-30% to 30 of records. And the dry signal seen here is also reinforced by that drier than median rainfall outlook on the previous slide. 
The Climate Services for Agriculture website is a collaboration between the Bureau and CSIRO. It's a platform being developed to help farmers adapt to climate variability and trends and has been funded by the Australian Government's Future Drought Fund. You can find it at climateservicesforag.indraweb.io. The link is spelled out above and this is the homepage where you type in your location just above the map here and once you've selected a location, press continue on the bottom right. There is a treasure trove of information to mine on this website, but today we're keeping to the seasonal rainfall outlook. So choosing the third column, the seasonal outlook on the right. This takes you to a great rainfall display. On the left, you can choose monthly or seasonal time periods. So we're looking at the July outlook for Sherborne here, or you can flick to seasonal and get the three month outlook from July to September as well. So it's using the same data available on the Bureau Climate Outlooks, but it's presented in an alternate format here for your point location giving the 75% chance, 50% chance, and 25% chance for at least across the top there, with the skill level shown below in a star rating. On the bottom left, there's a detailed rainfall breakdown with the chance of receiving at least for a number of rainfall thresholds. And on the right, a handy summary of the median rainfall, the rainfall received last July, and the rainfall over the past three months as well. It's in a prototype stage. They are hungry for feedback. So if you have suggestions for what you'd like to see, there's a feedback option at the top of the page. That's it for this update. As always, check the latest forecasts and warnings on the Bureau's website or the Bomb Weather app. And please send any feedback through to agriculture at bom.gov.au. We'd love to hear from you about ways we might improve the service. See you next Outlook. Thanks for listening.